This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Half of Wisconsin's fire chiefs say they don't have enough money to cover their budgets. UW Oshkosh researchers talked to 200 fire chiefs. Their study shows a rise in service calls, staffing shortages, and budget shortfalls. Also, more than 10% of Wisconsin's fire departments missed at least one service call in the last year. If crowds are any sign, the excitement is building for Kamala Harris's Democratic campaign for president. 12,000 people came out for her rally yesterday in Eau Claire. The path to the White House runs right through this state. And with your help, we will win. Republican running mate J.D. Vance is speaking to reporters everywhere Harris stumps this week. We think it's important to have a counter-narrative here. Harris is introducing her running mate Tim Walls to swing state voters. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are on a virtual tie in Wisconsin in the latest Marquette poll. Trump is up by one point with registered voters. Harris is up by one with likely voters. But if President Biden had stayed in the race, Trump would be leading by five points. When he made that decision, it opened the door to a fresh campaign. So there was a very quick embrace of Harris. That, I think, was interesting. Marquette poll director Charles Franklin says Senator Tammy Baldwin is leading Eric Hovde 53-46. to 46. The state of Wisconsin is moving ahead with plans to buy the Wisconsin Veterans Museum in downtown Madison. The State Building Commission approved plans to spend $9 million yesterday. The aging building would be torn down and a new state-of-the-art museum would go up in its place. The future of the universities of Wisconsin is up for discussion before a legislative study committee today. System President Jay Rothman speaks with the panel, which is looking at everything from costs to enrollment to graduation rates. The committee is supposed to make recommendations to lawmakers next year. The man accused in a shocking murder in Milwaukee last spring had plans to commit the crime weeks ahead of time. That's according to court records that say Maxwell Anderson told an informant he hatched his plan in early March. Charday Robinson disappeared in early April. Her dismembered remains turned up throughout the Milwaukee area. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. Vice President Kamala Harris and her newly named running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, held a rally in Eau Claire on Wednesday. Vice President Harris and Governor Walz were met with cheers from an enthusiastic crowd and chants like, We're not going back. Their remarks focused on their vision for the future of America, including access to abortion, strengthening the middle class, and criticisms of the Project 2025 agenda. Campaign staff estimated the crowd in the Eau Claire event district was about 12,000 people. Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance held a competing rally in Eau Claire on Wednesday, criticizing Vice President Kamala Harris a few miles away from her rally with her new running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. According to a WQOW report, Vance's speech focused on border security, fentanyl, and reliance on energy from overseas. Unlike the harris Walls rally, Vance's event at Wallard International was not open to the public. Some supporters still gathered outside on the sidewalks near the building. Rice Lake native Kenny Bednarik will be competing in the 200-meter dash finals at the Paris Olympics on Thursday. The event will be Bednarik's second finals appearance of these Olympics, finishing seventh in an extremely tight 100-meter dash final on Sunday. USA teammate Noah Lyles narrowly won that gold medal. Bednarik's stronger event is the 200-meter dash, the race in which he won the silver medal at the Tokyo Olympics and won both of his heats this year. The finals of the event will air Thursday afternoon. Wisconsin fire departments are sharing their concerns over their financial futures. According to a Northern News Now report, a UWO survey found that fire departments in the state have reported struggling to secure adequate and sustainable funding and recruit and retain firefighters to meet growing service needs. Some say that without the funding, they're unable to pay their crews competitive salaries for experienced firefighters and are unable to pay for them to continue training to ensure they can handle any situation. The school district of Altoona has installed new overdose aid kits in their schools. According to a press release, the aid kits will be available to students and staff at the high school, middle school, intermediate school, and elementary school. The kits contain naloxone and other resources that are free to use in an emergency. Students and staff in the district will also be trained on how to use them. State Senator Jesse James partnered with the Clinton Global Initiative's Overdose Response Network and Start Healing Now to provide the kits. 
The Eau Claire City County Health Department is warning residents of a rise in COVID-19 detections in the area. According to a Facebook post, the health department says COVID-related hospitalizations are on the rise and they are detecting a higher level of the virus in the county's wastewater systems right now. Health officials are reminding area residents to take a COVID test if they begin experiencing any symptoms and that they should keep a safe distance from other residents and wear a mask if they test positive for the virus. The Lake Halley Police Department is warning residents of an ongoing string of thefts. According to law enforcement authorities, there have been six stolen vehicle reports in the village since the beginning of July, which they say is incredibly uncommon. They also say police officials have identified some suspects in the cases, although no arrests have been made in connection with the thefts yet. Law enforcement authorities are reminding residents to lock their car doors and keep their valuables in their home, not their car. The Barron County Sheriff's Department has launched some new community tools to increase access to information. According to a press release, the new tools include a tip line, a crime information map, and a way to help law enforcement by registering personal camera locations. The tip line is launching this week, and residents can submit anonymous tips to the Sheriff's Department on cityprotect.com. The community crime map is still about two weeks away from launching, and the camera registration two weeks after that. And that's what you need to know. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Packers' injury list grows. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports. NFL training camp week three. And the Packers' first-round draft pick, offensive lineman Jordan Morgan, is injured. Uh, He had a shoulder. It's nothing long-term, but he's going to be out probably for a week or so. Head coach Matt LaFleur, the Packers play the Browns in Cleveland this Saturday. Baseball, eight runs and 16 hits. The Brewers beat the Braves last night in Atlanta, eight to five to win the series. Pat Murphy. You talk about how relentless our offense was today. It was relentless and it wasn't a lot of extra base hits, but you know, it was relentless. And at the Olympics, U.S. sprinter Kenny Benarek from Rice Lake, Wisconsin, qualifies for the 200-meter finals with a time of 20 seconds flat. I mean, I already knew what pace I was at. And for me, it was like, hey, I know I'm there. I just got to make sure to execute the race, step on the gas, and don't let up. I'm not surprised with what I ran. Only thing I was just hoping for was the win to work with me, and it did, and I'm happy with my performance. A replay of today's finals coming up tonight on NBC with Sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Well, it's not a powerhouse in college sports, but Florida International Stadium will have one of the coolest names in college football. Armando Christian Perez, also known as Pitbull, has purchased naming rights for the school stadium. The creator of hits such as Give Me Everything and Timber paid $6 million for the rights to have the stadium bear his name over five years. The entrepreneur and philanthropist who did not attend college himself says he purchased the rights to inspire the community and create opportunities. Pitbull probably could have adopted a highway for far less cash. Theater fans are giving their regards to to Broadway. Deadline reports that Broadway is having a stellar year with hits like Oh Mary and The Outsiders. The former is a comedy about Mary Todd Lincoln. The show has been pulling in a million a week since mid-July. And The Outsiders, a musical based on Essie Hinton's book from 1967, is setting attendance records. In its 11th week of the current season, Broadway has taken in almost 370 million bucks. That's the kind of money that makes you want to sing and dance. Two of the hottest stars in Hollywood are in discussions to star in the new A24 film, The Drama. Zendaya and Robert Pattinson are in early negotiations to play a couple about to get married when something unexpected happens. The incredibly busy Zendaya is coming off two big hits this summer, including Dune and Challengers, and is about to start filming a new season of Euphoria. The MTV Video Music Award nominations have been announced, and to no one's surprise, Taylor Swift leads the pack with 10. Swift received eight nominations for her Fortnite music video and was nominated in the Best Pop category and for Artist of the Year. She was followed closely by one of her favorite collaborators in Post Malone, who was nominated eight times for Swift's Fortnite video and got a ninth nom for his country hit I Had Some Help with Morgan Wallen. Twenty years after the death of comedian Mitch Hedberg, a documentary is in the works about his life. Hedberg was known for his one-liners and made several appearances on Late Night TV and did three stand-up comedy albums. He died of a drug overdose in 2005 at the age of 37. The film, which has been five years in the making, will include archival footage of Hedberg's act, interviews with friends and fellow comedians, including Jim Gaffigan. The project is untitled at the moment with no exact release date. Being one of the richest people in the world and owning social media outlet X does not make Elon Musk above criticism, not even from family. Page Six reports Musk's own daughter, Vivian Jenna Wilson, who identifies as trans, called her father a serial adulterer and not a family man adding that he has had several cheating scandals and calls him a racist. Musk has 12 children with three women and has attacked his daughter for her gender identity. Should be a fun Thanksgiving in the Musk house this year. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network.
Partly cloudy today. We'll get to 71 for a high this afternoon. The wind out of the northwest at 10 to 20, gusting to 25 by later this afternoon. Tonight, partly cloudy, 52 tomorrow. Partly cloudy and still breezy with a high of 69. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Right now, it's 64. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at wcfw.fm or thetap.fm.